Hello friends, in this video we are going to see how to apply superposition theorem in a circuit consisting of independent sources only. So for a demo purpose, we are going to solve this problem for a superposition theorem which consists of only independent sources present. So before going for the problem, some concepts we will revise for a superposition theorem. So it states that suppose you have to target one of the register over here. So I will not go for the statement as such, but directly a methodology how to apply superposition theorem to the circuit. So let's consider we have to get a current flowing through 4 ohm register. Using this particular theorem. So, what it states the current flowing through this 4 ohm register is because of the effect of this voltage source and this current source acting alone. What does this mean acting alone? Whenever I have to take an effect of a 40 volt, I need to, I should not consider the 8 ampere. And whenever I need to consider the effect of 8 ampere on this 4 ohm as far as current is concerned, I should not consider 40 volt. But what is the meaning of should not consider? Should not consider means what? We have to replace those sources with their internal resistances. So basically, whenever I analyze the circuit using a superposition theorem, if I say 40 volt acting alone, I should not consider 8 ampere. What do you mean by this? Basically, 8 ampere is a current source which is open circuited. Now why we open circuit the current source? It's quite obvious. Open circuit implies the internal resistance as infinite and ideal current source do have infinite internal resistance present across it. So it is quite obvious that whenever I have to replace a current source with its internal resistance, it means an infinite resistance and infinite resistance implies open circuit. So what do we do over here? Whenever I consider 40 volt acting alone, this current source stands open circuited. Similarly, if you consider the second source, which is 8 ampere, now whenever 8 ampere is acting alone, we should not consider 40 volt, and being a voltage source, we will short circuit it. 40 volt is short circuited. Why? Because being a voltage source. So what is so special about the voltage source so that we can short circuit it? Short circuit implies the internal resistance as zero. So what we can say voltage source has zero internal resistance in series. So we will get some modification in the circuit in both the cases. So hence we need to redraw the circuit and by applying KCL, KBL, mesh, or nodal analysis you can go for source transformation also so by applying this technique we have to get current flowing through 4 ohm we'll consider this as i dash 4 ohm because this is just considering the effect of 40 volt similarly over here we have to get i 4 ohm I double dash because 8 ampere is only source we have considered by short circuiting the 
available voltage source. In the end, the third step will nothing but algebraic sum of these two. What do you mean by algebraic? We have to consider both the currents with sign that is nothing but total current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor for this particular circuit. So thing is that this part is very important. Why we have to open circuit the current source and why we have to short circuit the voltage source. So obviously we are considering these two are the ideal elements only. So once again internal resistance of ideal current source is infinite and infinite means open circuit. Similarly, internal resistance of ideal voltage source is zero and zero means short circuit. So let's apply all this uh, theory to this problem and we'll get answer. So let me write once again this statement that means 4 volt is acting alone with 8 ampere as the open circuit. Head. So we'll get so 40 volt is acting alone and what we have done for the 8 ampere being a current source we have open circuited so 8 ampere is open circuited so since we have made a modification to the original circuit so we need to redraw it so while redrawing instead of a current source i have to open it so when this will get open there is no meaning for this open wire so i will get a simple circuit with a two loop straight away one loop has been reduced so we will get a circuit like this and you have to stick to any one of the technique so let's go for the simple technique and that is a mesh analysis so two currents i1 I2 give rise to a drop plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus. So let's apply KVL to mesh one. So it's a 40 minus 2I1 minus phi i1 plus phi i2 equal to 0 upon simplifying we will get minus 7 i1 plus phi i2 equal to minus 40 as equation number 1 similarly i can apply kvl to mesh 2 we will get minus 4i2 minus 3i2 minus 5i2 plus 5i1 equal to 0. So 5i1 minus 4 minus 3 is minus 7 minus 7 minus 5 is minus 12i2 equal to 0. Upon solving 1 and 2, we will get I1 and I2. So upon solving this equation 1 and 2, we will get the value of I1 and I2. So I1 is nothing but 8.1356 ampere and I2 is 3.3898 ampere. Now what we want a current flowing through 4 ohm and 4 ohm is nothing but a I2. So I can say I4 ohm dash. Why dash? Because this is only because of a 40 volt acting alone which is nothing but I2 equal to 3.3898 ampere. Let's go ahead with the second source now. So now second source is acting alone which is nothing but 8 ampere. Now what we have to do for a 40 volt? Being a voltage source we need to 
ஷார்ட் இருக்குது so in the original circuit we have to make this modification that got to short circuit this voltage so short circuit means replacing it with a wire so how the circuit will look like so circuit will look like this a short circuit rest of the resistances will be as it is and we'll have this current source acting in the circuit this is 8 ampere this is 4 ohm 3 5 and 2 as we discussed earlier we have to stick to a same technique for both the sources for a sake of easiness while solving the problem so what we'll do we we'll have a mesh analysis for this also i1 i2 and over here it is i3 so three currents three equations will get so if i apply kvl to mesh 1 we will get equation before that we will mark all voltage drop because of the current flowing through all the resistors in the circuit in this manner so apply cable to mesh 1 plus minus minus 2i1 plus minus minus 5i1 minus plus plus 5i2 equal to 0 so we will get a simple equation Minus seven i one plus five i two equal to zero equation number one. Same manner we can apply KVL to mesh two plus minus minus four i two plus minus minus three i two minus plus plus 3i3 plus minus minus 5i2 and minus plus plus 5i1 equal to 0 so upon simplifying we'll get equation 5i1 minus 4 minus 3 and minus 5 will become minus 12i2 And plus three i three equal to zero equation number two. Now, if you see carefully, mesh three has only current source present, so no need to apply cable to mesh three. But this i three same as the eight ampere. We have to just check the direction. So this direction is upward, but we have shown our current direction downward for this branch. So the only change in in the sign. So i three is minus eight ampere. This is the equation number three. Three equations, three unknowns. We will get I one, I two, I three upon solving these three equations as I one equal to minus two point zero three three nine ampere. I two equal to minus two point eight four seven five ampere. And no need to write for I three because it is obviously a minus eight ampere only. So I will skip that part. Now our focus was on I four ohm. So once again, I four ohm is I two only. So I can say I four ohm double dash same as I two. It's nothing but minus two point eight four seven five ampere. So see, we have done the analysis two times because two independent sources were present. We got two currents. Ultimately, we have to add these two currents algebraically. Algebraically means what? Which sign? So if I add these two currents algebraically, I will get I four ohm as the final answer. I four ohm dash plus I four ohm double dash 
and that final answer is nothing but 0 0.5423 ampere and see in both the cases I have marked the conduction same hence no need to think it will be whatever the conduction we have marked So we'll get this as the final answer. So what is the problem with the solution theorem? Number of independent sources present in the circuits, number of times you have to redraw and analyze the circuit. This is what the supervision theorem is. I hope you have understood the problem. Thank you.